Hello folks, this is Tom from anti-proton.com and as you can see I have here a Geiger counter and a scintillator and I am testing this uh, radium compass. You may have seen this radium compass before, I've shown it a couple times. And as you can see it takes away, if I can get close enough to it I can pick up 7,000 plus counts a minute off of it. Obviously jammed up inside here, um, I can't really get anywhere near that many counts. Um, this is a short video. I don't really want to go too deep in anything because I don't have a lot of time. I'm working a really heavy week at work. Um, got a lot of stuff to do, lots and lots of things to get done. And I haven't had a lot of time, and I'm still learning how to use my unit, but I wanted to show you something neat. I'm getting a little better at it, a little bit better resolution, I, although I've decided that I do need, and I'm going to show you the screen just in just a minute, I do need to get a hell of a lot more lead, like lead, 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 lead so that I can get more resolution. See, lead will let me pick up less and less crap I don't want. Maybe aluminum around the outside of that. So I'm going to need to probably spend about $100, $200 and buy some lead and just fill this whole sucker up, but we'll do that. Anyway, here's the unit, and as you can see, the little compass is inside of there, and it is happily irradiating the hell out of my, out of my um, uh, sodium iodide uh, crystal which follows the little lines over here to the actual unit. As you can see, the activity light is pretty much solid because it's getting that much activity. Positive polarity. Blah, blah, blah. And um, let's see if you can see the back of this crazy thing. All these little connectors and gizmos and all sorts of stuff. And you can connect anything to this. Like all kinds of connectors can be connected to this. It's a really, really nice unit, actually. Anyway, um, here's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at radium. And I'm about to get onto the uh, screen here, but as you can see from radium, radium-226 is what's probably in the compass. And um, I have some of the more common uh, uh, gamma ray energies put down here. Some of the more common ones all the way down, including the mystery one I finally solved. My 243 kilo electron volt, sp volt spike turned out to be probably a 241.98 from... PB214, which is LED 214. Let's take a peek at the screen now. Let me cut the light down a little bit. I think this lower light is easier for you guys to see. It looks like crap to me, but it looks probably good to you guys. We're still in the middle of the detecting, so I can't smooth it or anything, but let me crank up the, the dots. There you go. Now you should be able to see a little better. All right, as you can see, the highest we have up here is 43,000 counts. That's 43 if you can't see it. 70, 61, 52, 43, and so on. And as you see across the spectrum here, we have a pretty broad, pretty broad, well-defined spectrum. This is significantly better than the crap I had yesterday. Remember the crap I had yesterday where it was all over the place and fuzzy looking? I'm getting better, people. Give me some credit here. All right, this is a peak right here. And as you can see, uh, uh, bismuth 214 is right here. And this is the peak right here. And I'm not sure if I'm completely calibrated quite right. As you can see, I could be off a little bit. Um, I'm going to buy another source that will allow me to have an even better calibration. And it's a possibility that this isn't bismuth 214. That guy's a little off of where the, the photo peak, this is called a photo peak, and it's actually centered right here, which is a little bit off of there. Now, let's in fact, let's see where it's centered. For PB214, it should be somewhere right around... Um, what the hell's PB214? Somewhere right around... Well, somewhere right around here. Um, Peter's, but, just, but look at that, PB214. These guys match perfectly. Here are the other two PB14s. Uh, let's see. 351.92 kilo electron volts, which is right there. And right down here at 295, right? 295? Isn't that about 295? Oops, sorry, that's, two, that's 297. 295, yeah, right there. That's it. And this guy right here at, uh, oops, at uh, 214, sorry, P PB214 at 241. Yeah, that was the mystery peak. It was so hard for me to find. And there's radium 226 right there. Dead on, radium 266. Dead on. That right there is probably. But, uh, probably x-rays, little spikes of x-rays and crap as the um, 
as the al uh, alpha particles and beta particles and so on, and even the gamma smack into the lead at full, sp uh, full speed. Now I've got a couple other features, some things I can do I've discovered. I, I can change a lot of my settings and get a better look at how things look. See, this peak right here becomes part of this peak. That's the little Compton edge, I think, right there, I think. So if you guys are like expert physicists when it comes to spectra, uh, spec, uh, spectroscopy, then you can like correct me and stuff. But I think that that's, I think that's uh, actually that looks more like a backscatter with a, a Compton edge on one side, backscatter on the other. Um, but you see these guys right here look like valid photo peaks. That one's off a little bit. I don't know why I have that so far off. Oops. Let's see here. Let's crank that down really low, as you can see. Yeah. Now let me show you the mode I had this in yesterday, where I think I had the, I'd gone wrong with this other mode. That's the mode I was using yesterday. And it looks great with these more powerful sources. See? But with the weaker sources, like just a little bit of water, a water sample or something like that, it doesn't work so well. But once I surround the sucker with lead, it should be a little bit better. I'm going to go to United Nuclear and buy a truckload of uh, uh, Radmax shielding and just, just totally cake the sucker and... And um, look at my cat did in my hand. Nice cat, but my god, he tears me up. I'm going to just cover this sucker in lead. I have brick. Uh, well, I'm not going to show it to you, but I have brick outside of my apartment. And I know my brick is radioactive, and I think that's what's getting to this. Anyway, this has been running for 2,700 seconds, so I think it's just about done. And the uh, last thing I was going to show you guys before I run out of battery here is uh, this guy right here. I took my analysis of my rock. This is that stupid rock I'm always talking about. You know the little ugly rock I always have? This is my crappy analysis from yesterday when I wasn't really so good at getting these things accurate. But I did trace each one of the little lines here. I spent some time calculating all of this stuff. And um, I think I got a little bit of LU-176 right here. And a little CM248, CM248, but it could also be barium-133, barium-133M, maybe. I'm not 100% sure. So I'm going to run a much better analysis on this a little bit later. But I'm almost out of battery time, so this has been Tom from anti-proton.com. And uh, what a scintillating evening, and hopefully we'll get a little bit better. My God, I think it's going to rain on Thursday, so we'll see. Bye-bye. Um,